Good day everybody, welcome to today's video. I hope you guys are having a great day. This is Jerry from Bullshit Corner. In today's video, we're going to look at the X-Tool D7 Bidirectional Scanner. I'm a huge fan of bidirectional scanners because with today's modern vehicles, you really need to communicate with the different modules to do special functions in order to properly diagnose the issue you got. So X-Tool sent this one to me, so I'm going to give you my thoughts. My first impressions of it, so I'm just unboxing it, getting it out of the cardboard box. It comes in, of course, a plastic blow mold case. And this bidirectional scanner, of course, is Android based. Just opening it up, see what kind of magic's inside. So, in this system right here, is not a Bluetooth system, it's a cable control. So, that's the OBD connector. There's a charging cable, uh, the cable that connects from the tablet to the obd connector and then in the blow mold case above in the plastic is the actual unit itself i'm going to talk about that piece later on that's where all the magic is right there right inside there so the first thing you want to do obviously when you get it before you even use it you want to plug it in to charge it and you want to start to prepare to get the update but i'm just having a good look at it giving my all pressure thoughts. This is a budget scanner, so I'm not sure what to think of it at this point in time. You get your manuals. But one of the things I do like is that it comes with three years of updates where a lot of scanners are one year and the updates are pretty expensive. You're looking at anywhere from $600 and up for updates for a year, but this one's three years for free. So once again, that's the OBD connector that plugs into the cable. But that piece right there is your charge connector that you can use for different voltages, maybe 220 or 110, but I'm not gonna use that at all. No offense though, but I don't trust those things. So I'm just booting it up right now. That's the screen that you're gonna see when you boot the scanner up. Pretty fancy, nice Ferrari in the middle. And you gotta go through the whole setup, the activation, connect to the internet. And then once you connect it to the internet, you put your email in, and then you're good to go. So then it starts booting up afterwards. Takes a couple minutes. Just be patient. So that's the interface of the X-Tool bidirectional scanner. I like the interface. It's nice, neat, and clean. And now, of course, as I mentioned before, the first thing you want to do is make sure all the updates are done. And there's a lot of updates because it covers all vehicles throughout the whole world. So there is a lot of updating to do. So th at this point in time, make sure it's plugged in. Start doing the updates. Walk away. Come back in about an hour or so because it's going to take a long time to update. And as I come back, everything's updated. It's going to double check again because sometimes you update. Then you go back. Then there's another update that on top of that but it says everything's up to date so we're good so we're just going to start looking at it going to the settings and set your language and then there's the interface just kind of pressing buttons kind of get a feel for it i guess the remote control is of course if you want to operate it from somewhere far away maybe if you got a technician or something that doesn't really know how to operate it and you do from a distance you can get in there and see the report of course it uh, creates report every time you scan a vehicle. These are the special functions, which is really handy. And I'm just kind of playing around with some of the features. I don't have it plugged into a vehicle right now. I'm just kind of getting my, my bearings, so to speak. Well, I can't do anything till it's plugged into a vehicle. So I'm just going to power it down and then we're going to plug it into my Jeep. Alright, we're just booting up. I need to set this somewhere where I can film with the camera because of the distance. Alright, let's go to auto scan, see what happens. Look at that, comes right up. Automatic scan, seems to be pretty quick. Scanning the whole system for codes. It says instrument cluster, one failure so far. Let's have a look. What's going on now? Let's go. DTC report. 
port, front left seat heater control circuit open. That yeah, makes sense. I didn't think the uh, seat heated seat worked. Lost communication with the radio because it's no longer in there. Transfer case range position sensor high. Uh, plug that sensor in. There shouldn't be an issue with that. Tire pressure monitor. It's back to out. That's where I'm gonna find that code. Central gateway. Diagnose. ECU information, uh, live data, just says ignition on, battery voltage, it says I'm in two wheel drive, that's what I'm in, so I'm not sure why this is giving me some sort of, why it gave me an error. So it is kind of cool. So when you come to this screen right here, it says read trouble codes. So you already scanned it. And if you want to see what that does, if you're connected to the internet, it goes to Google so you can search whatever it is. I close that window. Fat fingers. And touch that button right back there. It's back out of there. Can actuation test can we run? Door locks. Let's have a look. All doors locked. Ooh, look at that, eh? Look at that. Left turn lamp. I think we turned it on. Go off. Oops, cancel. I don't want screen recording. I like this scanner actually. Horn. Yeah, I like that. This is the beauty of bi-directional controls right here. Let's exit. Let's just go back out. Let's go to special function. Key programming, power balance only on Ford. Injector coating, oil reset. Soft start, gear learning. I don't think it has it for the Jeep. I don't think it does. It's got a bunch of, yeah, just GM is the only thing listed. That might be good on the TJ. Gearbox match, suspension. Headlight, oil reset. Da, da. Can I get a report? Diagnostic report? Oh, it does right there. Tells my Jeep. I can email. Breaks it all down. Then it gives you part numbers for the ECU and all that. I am very impressed with this. Oh, that information. Look at that. When you do, it gives you all the data. All the data. All right, just inside the old TJ now. Let's do the old auto scan on the Vortec PCM. See what we get. Comes up as GM. Except that's not what it is. We're not. We're not any of those types. Why is it coming up as that? That is not what we want. Okay, this is where our first issue comes into play because uh, I'll just go two-wheel drive because I got the Jeep transfer case. Let's do a system scan. See what comes up. I have been getting like a 
P0300 when it's cold, which is a uh, misfire, multiple cylinders, but only when it's like minus 30 out. So we're just going to scan and see what see what comes up. So I just came into the live data. I do like the fuel trim mode that you can go right into it instead of trying to sort it out through all the live data. Alright, I'm inside my TDI Jetta. So we're just going to see what's going to happen. I don't know what happened down there. It should be auto scanning. I don't have a 2019. What the heck? What's going on now? So for me, this was the deal breaker. This is my third, or actually my fourth, bi-directional scanner. And this is the only scanner that could not detect the computer in my Jeep TJ. When I did my LS swap. And this is the only one that cannot automatically detect my Volkswagen. Which raises huge red flags. Because now the issue is... I got to enter everything in manually. So then when you go to do a system scan, it scans through every module that the system possibly has. So as it shows, 49 modules it has to scan through. And then there's a few other features. I did not see if you could do any coding for the Volkswagen from what I could tell. But this was a huge red flag for me. So just going over some of the live data, what I am not impressed with is that it cannot automatically scan my TDI. It couldn't do that on my Jeep. It can only, the auto scan only worked on my JK. So this is where, I'm not saying it's not here, but I'm not too impressed that I haven't been able to find out where you can prime the lift pump with the TDI and go into fuel supply and it fails to communicate. There's another one back over there, 041, diesel electronics. And if you try to go in engine control module, that will load and then it has an actuation test. But if you go to actuation test, it's going to do its thing and then it's going to say not supported. So you can't do anything in there. Well, this is where we get into the cold hard truth. And honestly, I am not impressed with that bi-directional scanner. Does it work? Yes. I don't... My biggest issue is, is that two out of three vehicles that I own, it failed to automatically detect what the vehicle was, where my other bi-directional scanners had no problems. Secondly, for the Volkswagen, it's very important when you change the fuel filter to prime the fuel pump. Now, every other bi-directional scanner that I own has a feature inside that I can prime the fuel pump. However, with this scanner, I'm not saying it's not there. I'm just saying I was not able to find a feature where I could prime the fuel pump. So at this time, I'm uncertain if there is one. And I also didn't see anything in there in case you want to do some coding. Or like when I did the backup camera in my Jetta, I was able to code it in. I don't know if you can even do anything like that. The problem is if you can't automatically scan your vehicle and get the proper modules, then it has to go through a complete scan of everything that it could possibly have to weed it out. And that just takes up more time. It's more of a pain in the butt. So I want to thank you guys for sending me the scanner. Unfortunately... In my personal opinion, if I had bought it and that's the way it was, I would have been sending it back. Anyways, I want to know what you guys think in the comments, what you think of the scanner. Anyways, I'm going to get going. If you have any questions or comments, post them below. Otherwise, I'm going to see you guys in the next one.